Hey all you goofy goobers, if the idea of this dog existing didn't already scare the crap out of you, what may scare you even more is the fact that when you have this dog on a network, it allows a Chinese company to list all connected devices, establish remote tunnels to those devices on the same network, access the remote dog's web interface with no authentication, which gives them access to the cameras on the robot dog for surveillance, log into the device, which by the way is just a Raspberry Pi with the credentials Pi123, and then from there, move laterally into other devices on the network. This dog here is called the Go One by a company, Unitree. Unitree is a robotics company, I think, based out of China. Um, and for the low, low price of 2000 3000 or for the educational platform, 9000 you can have a remote access device up to this company in your home network. Very, very crazy stuff. That's a nice network you have there. Be a shame if someone put a back door in it. It's a, a robot that I've seen all over Twitter, kind of trending, like these random, like remember Boston Dynamics? It became like a trend to like, Boston Dynamics would have a robot, and people would just like, kick it over um, and it would be like the funny thing we do. Well, first of all, they're gonna gain consciousness someday and fight back and I'm very nervous for that day. But a new version of this is a, a dog made by this company called Unitree that people have been buying apparently outside of China. And so these guys, these researchers took it apart and figured out the architecture of the design like any good reverse engineer would do. That's what I would do. I'm a reverse engineer, I'm an offensive security researcher. We gotta figure out what's going on inside of this thing. Turns out it's just a Raspberry Pi with some sensors, some cameras, and an ethernet switch, sounds all well and good. Well, luckily, the device also allows you to download its firmware. It's a free to access firmware that you can download off of their website. And surprisingly, for a company that's doing weird stuff, it's not encrypted. Typically, you would think if they're trying to like do weird stuff with a robot that has like a remote access capability, they would encrypt their firmware so you couldn't see it. But you can just go down with the firmware for here. And these guys being good researchers did just that. They have the firmware here and you can see there's a couple of firmware blobs, one for the Nano, which is like the CPU that processes all of the camera data. And then you have the Raspberry Pi firmware. You also can see this guy uses cursor AI, very interesting. We got to kind of look at the researcher too. And inside of this firmware blob, there are a variety of features, but they found this one very concerning feature that the dog, when it turns on, on is making a connection out to CloudSail. Now, CloudSail is a remote access tunnel service developed by Zhe, I'm not gonna try to pronounce, I don't, I don't speak Mandarin, uh, primarily targeted at Chinese markets. The service is designed to provide NAT traversal and remote access capabilities for IoT devices, industrial equipment, and other network systems. So think about like, anytime you have like an IoT device, right? You have like this thing. This is a light bulb that for some reason has firmware that I've been trying to hack on Twitch. Um, they connect up typically to some like cloud management service to monitor the device or to manage the device, which by itself isn't like that big of a deal. It's not like a huge issue, but the fact that it is a remote access tunnel service is what starts to raise alarms, right? So what can the service do? The cloud service can establish a connection from any device to another, even across different networks, depending on your configuration. For example, you could open a TCP connection to a connected device. The client on the device connects to the cloud cell network, allowing you to route connections to services running on that device. So basically, this service runs on a device and it makes tunnels out to this cloud provider and it bypasses all firewall rules. So for example, if you have an SSH daemon running on the client device, you could connect to it through cloud sale, even if your firewall blocks the connections or if you're not intentionally doing port forwarding. It is literally a like tunnel building piece of malware that allows anyone who works at cloud sale to connect into it. Now, again, I know what you're thinking. Don't a lot of like cloud enabled devices do this? Isn't like this common functionality for any kind of IoT device? Typically IoT devices, like I'll bring up this light bulb, for example, this light bulb, all it's gonna do is maybe like emit telemetry about itself. Maybe it like reports its battery life or it's, it's 120 volts. You know what I mean? Like something about it to the service. I would like to think that there isn't a functionality in this light bulb that can 
build a tunnel from the cloud provider into this light bulb that gives them access to other parts of the network. They obtained a Unitree cloud sale API key for doing the research, which allowed them full access to the cloud API. This actually enabled them to list all of the devices that are connected to the cloud sale API for this version of the API, for this, you know, for the, the, the dog version. And they found 1900 devices connected to the service at some point, and they're able to see that right now there are two devices active on the network. So not great, the fact that like an API access gives you not only the company access to you, it gives you as an actor in this network the ability to see other devices. Not great, and uh, unfortunately, it gets worse. In this example, we created a tunnel to one of our clients on port 80. For demonstration, we can connect to our own robot dog, but they actually were able to connect to any device on the network. So using this tunnel manager, they would have been able to connect from their dog and build a tunnel through cloud sale to any other dog on the network. That is just crazy. And you'll see there actually is another device on this network that isn't just one of the dogs. There's a uh, Windows 10 desktop on the network as well, probably them for the sake of demonstration, but it, it doesn't just apply to this dog. Anyone running the cloud sale product apparently is able to do this. And so by building this tunnel, they could access the HTTP server on this dog and view all of the cameras conveniently without any credentials. You'll see they blocked it out obviously, but there would have been four cameras here, each different eye of the dog dog, and they also can remotely control the dog from this tunnel interface. And of course, we also are able to simply open a tunnel for port 22 and log in via SSH. The robot dogs are delivered with the default credentials of Pi123, and if not changed, we can use them to log in. And obviously, no regular consumer is going to log into this device and try to change the SSH password. They're literally just going to like turn on the dog, be happy that it exists, and so be it. And so when it's connected to the internet, anybody who knows this, these researchers and now all of you guys at home uh, can log into these devices with these default credentials. And this also includes the cloud sale provider or any malicious actors on the cloud sale network can now log into these devices with these credentials. And also given that this is SSH, after connecting to the Raspberry Pi via SSH, it is easily possible to access the local network of the robot dog. So picture this, you have this dog on your Wi-Fi. No one can get into your Wi-Fi without the password. But because your dog is connecting up to the cloud cell tunnel service and the tunnel service can SSH into your Raspberry Pi, the tunnel service can now SSH into your Raspberry Pi and begin to poke and prod and if they want to exploit into other devices in your network. That is absolutely crazy to me. Due to this, we were interested who is and was connected to the service, and we checked the public IPs that we got from the Cloud Sale API for clues. Here are the universities that we saw at least once connected to the tunnel network as an example. So MIT, Princeton, University of Massachusetts, Amherst, CMU, and then Waterloo, I don't speak German, I'm not gonna try to pronounce this, University of Otago and then Sydney, Deakin, and Shinju in Japan. So I'm gonna huff the copium and just pretend that these guys are also doing research and that these universities have not been compromised by a potential, like basically walking hardware implant of walking hardware piece of malware um, in, in their network. And then some more that we chose to not identify. Ultimately, Unitree did pre-install a tunnel without notifying its customers. Anybody with access to the API key can freely access all robot dogs on the network, remotely control them, and use the tunnel vision on the cameras to see through their eyes or even hop onto the Raspberry Pi by SSH. If this was abused or not does not matter in this case, the mere presence of the service without letting the user know is not good practice and can be seen as malicious. So a few things to take away from this, right? One, if you ever have IoT anything where the features in quotes of the device are questionable. This is a Yi light light bulb that is by a company that I think is owned by Xiaomi, another Chinese company. I don't trust this light bulb to save my life. And eventually to do the research I wanna do, I will have to connect this light bulb, I hate that I have to say this, to my Wi-Fi network, I guess. And so to do this, what I'm gonna do is make a VLAN, a virtual LAN on my router that has no access to anything else in my network and can be tunneled through a security gateway that I can monitor, right? Now, in theory, if they know what router I'm using and like have an exploit for that router, they could like violate the VLAN boundaries, but I doubt that's gonna happen. Okay, so step one, if you're using IoT stuff, do not let your IoT stuff touch your other stuff. Put it on a separate network entirely. Part two, okay, is this malicious? Here's the thing. 
Uh, what is it? Don't mark up to malice, but you can write off as negligence or whatever, or like stupidity or something. What I'm trying to say is that like, it may be the fact that they just made a mistake. While a company that owns routers could like push a bad update or push an update with like questionable features, pushing or shipping software by default that allows people to tunnel through other networks with like credentials like one, two, three, and also that the dog just happens to also have cameras on it, just feels malicious by default. This could either be very, very poor security design or malicious, and that's I think kind of where software is going as like software gets more secure. We're gonna start to see companies ship things that was that intentionally unsecure or was this just like, was this just them like ignoring it on purpose? I don't know guys. Anyway, interesting stuff. I'll link the report down in the description below if you wanna read it a little deeper. If you like these deep dives on kind of like weird stuff that's happening in the world of, of hardware and software, hit subscribe, I do this all the time. And then go check out this video about a different backdoor in a heart monitor. Kind of crazy, we'll see you there.